my, my name is Cass. I'm from, from Japan, I'm from the National Institute of Infotics. Um, we are, our institution is an emblem supplying the Pacific Network uh, to hold the Japanese higher education. And on the top of that, uh, we have a couple middleware services like a high performance computing, drug working service, and identity information. And also, we have a scholarly content related service. So, um, today, um, I'd like to introduce the Japanese update in terms of the Diversity uh, related service. And um, according to these topics, the first is the JP core. Um, and because of that, our historical background, uh, we have a um, couple of um, repository communities since 2006. The first one is the DRF, this is repository federation established in 2006 and um, um, by the, uh, as one of our project supported by, uh, funded by us. And um, the second one is our cloud service, uh, which was started in 2012. And this is also has a sort of a user community and different from the DRF. And the final one is the, our new community, which is mainly focusing on to the much more advanced discussion around a, the future repository. But uh, the finally, the last year, we succeeded to master it into the single body named JP Core. Um, I, I steal the name from the core, it was good. And uh, right now, uh, we have a 482 members right now. And then um, uh, having a three different working group and a four task force. The working group is, has a much more longer uh, lifetime than the task force. And um, my colleague, um, the Tomoko uh, sitting over there and, and making, uh, making a video. Uh, she's leading the new metadata scheme and task force. And uh, this photo was taken, uh, uh, it's at the 2017, last March. Uh, we had the first general assembly and uh, they finalized a, our working group and the task force, which was good. And um, anyway, in Japan, um, Every single institution repository uh, they expose their metadata um, in terms of our standard uh, right now named JP, um, Juni 2. And now we are making a transition from the Juni 2 and to much more complicated uh, new schema named JP Core uh, in order to make a accordance with a the core controlled vocabulary and open air uh, metadata guideline. But anyway, the metadata are aggregated to our database named ILBB and, they, and then redistributed into the several database, including the International Open AI database. <laughs> and also, um, um, we have in, in Japan, we have um, our own DOI registration system named um, Japan Link Center. So, um, in this Institution we go through, we can assign the DOI as, a, as they want, and it's a free of charge right now. And um, but usually, making a transition to the new metadata schema uh, takes a long time. It's a little bit difficult uh, because um, you know we have to ask to the every single institution we go through to make it more newer standard. But in our case, it's relatively easy because of, uh, we have a. Um, Repository Cloud Sites named J um, Jail Club um, from the 2012. <laughs> so um, initially, uh, we supplied this service to especially focusing on the small class and the middle range university, which doesn't have a, a human and a budget resources, but wanted to have an institutional repository in their institution. So uh, in order to support such an institution, um, we support a system including an operation system and give, give, give them a virtual instance to the universities. So the, the university, they, they can focus on to make a contents and then distribute it to the uh, international way. So because um, we have a virtual instance, they can uh, make the institution repository as they want. And uh, we develop our own 
homegrown original import services that named Dueco on this way here. And we are trying, uh, trying to make a um, new development and uh, to make a new version right now. And um, this figure shows the growth of the, the number of the labor street in Japan. And this orange and gray is the member of our the, uh, institution using our jet bug service. It's around 500. And this blue bar is a, a system. Um, they are trying to operate by their own effort. But um, since we've started the transition, uh, migration service from the on-premise service to the our general service. So the number of the university who has an on-premise service is not decreasing like this. And um, but anyway, um, we have uh, many institutional repository in Japan. But at the same time, we have more than 800 or 900 universities in Japan. So uh, they are still have uh, much more space. And um, by enhancing this uh, JAG cloud, uh, the positive cloud service, now uh, we are planning to um, develop a, a new infrastructure for open science. So um, this infrastructure um, composed by three different um, elements like this. And this, the orange one is a sort of the JAG cloud. We are trying to expand it to the, not only the JANA part, but also the uh, research later. And we have an aggregation and a search engine named SIGNI. We call this as a SIGNI. And currently, is, the SIGNI is coming on the JANA art who works on the dissertation and we're trying to expand it to the research data as well. And it has a, a connection with the international metadata aggregator, like this way. And in addition to them, our new challenge is um, to set up and the um, new service for the research data management system. And at the beginning, uh, we compared a couple of existing service like, like this. And finally, we made a decision to employ the Open Science Framework as our research data management system because of its flexibility and extensibility. And only now, our developing, developers are the hacking the Open Science Framework and uh, they implemented it in our domain and are trying to enhance these kind of functionalities, including the um, rich interface with the institutional repository, especially focusing on the data cloud. <coughs> and, and also, I'm um, trying to, uh, I brought this video from the GIST, I'm um, trying to support this kind of data life cycle by using our three different platforms, including a research data management system. And um, maybe this figure in search is a little bit complicated, so um, I'd like to skip it. And um, this is our tentative plan. Um, maybe, hopefully, within this year, and the Japanese fiscal year is starting from April, so we've just started the 2017. And we would like to finish our first development within this year. And um, I would like to move on to the feasibility study from the next year, when we follow the right pilot and the production of the operation. And my final topic is about Asian Open Access Community. Um, this event happened two years ago, maybe in Porto. was two years ago, right? And me and the constants from the Singapore guys, uh, Singapore funding agency, ASTAR, and a lady from the many, she was from Sri Lanka, talked about a necessity of our regional, local community. Uh, because the, this core is so nice, it's so, um, you know, it's, it's something like a family, and we can talk to each other, but sometimes the content is too much advanced from the developing country in terms of open access. So we like to have a regional community in order to share much more practical level operation or their program in, or their daily program. And, um, and during the, the last, it, it's not, it, it's about one year ago, during the RDA uh, in Tokyo, uh, Kathleen was also attended to that conference and uh, uh, we had a, the first kickoff meeting uh, in Tokyo. And the Malaysian guys raised their hand to have a first meeting in the Kuala Lumpur. 
and um, we had a, um, the first meeting. And, um, maybe the, the photo was a little bit small, but we had more than 550 participants, mainly if, um, they are coming from the Malaysia, but um, they are coming from the, uh, from the different eight countries, which was good. And even in a big room, uh, we had a deep discussion about uh, open access. So, you know, to make it more sustainable uh, community, um, this year uh, we'd like to have it in Nepal. So, um, if you have a extra, this may happen around a maybe in November or December. So, if you have an extra travel budget, so please come to the, our Asian Open Access Summit in Nepal. So, so it's something, you know, coming to the uh, Southeast Asian country is totally different from the European country and uh, North America. So it's going to be a good chance to um, have a good experience with the Asian communities. to our discussions, which are often happening in Europe and North America. So it's, it's important also for us to go to those countries and try to bring our knowledge into those countries to help move forward and, and share things. I, we're going to do China.